Okay, so how's everybody doing? So let's talk trees. Uh, what shall we call it? Fine scale model trees or just modeling a tree. Um, and I'm not trying to minimize just, you know, shake and bake, quick trees, speed trees, super trees. They're all fantastic and they all play a role in the collective uh, scene or whatever or play if you want to call it you know there's extras like in a movie they'll have you know feature actors and they'll have all the extras in the background we'll try to see trees like that so here's some main actor and i want to talk about this tree but let me first just um give you a disclaimer i didn't build this tree and i wish i knew the name of the fellow that did so whoever built this tree if you can recognize it i believe the person is from europe somewhere in germany or europe or scandinavia i i just don't know and if i did know i would give them their name credit because i think this is one of the most simplest beautiful model trees this is ho scale i believe it could be a little bit larger scale but i'm pretty sure it's ho i'm going to talk about in a second and then show you some of my armatures this was one of the early trees i picked up this photo on google images and it was, is, is still, to this day, an inspiration to me. You know, we talk about inspiration, right? Sometimes inspiration can come from the strangest of places or other modelers or the real world, etc. But when I looked at this tree and I studied this, it was so stunning to me, just the balance of it, the inconsistency of it, right? There's nothing uniform about it. Uh, I believe it's a birch or it could be a poplar. I'm not really sure. But it doesn't really matter, right? because the tree just speaks for itself, okay? Before I show you what I've learned from this tree in application of my own, I wanna point out a tree that I've been working on, excuse me for a second, is this one. So this here is a little more complicated than this, right? And this photo proves that you don't have to even be this complicated. Because this is just two twisted wire strands. There's one basic strand with a few branches. And then there's another one with a few coming off like that. Almost like, uh, like this here. See how this here is kind of like that. So this tree is really just this one right here. In a way, like it, similarly, right? And that's it, right? And look how nice it looks. So now let me also mention to you that um, there is also static grass on here. It's hard to see, but this is very minimalist. That's the trick. And this is harder to do than you think, even though the tree model is quite simple, really. It's like it's anyone can do this if they concentrate and study it. Um, so these are just branches like this, uh, whatever material that they use, some kind of acrylic paste or something uh, there to cover this wire armature. But there's very little uh, static grass, and I'm going to show you that in a minute to explain this. And then this tree was painted, mottled, stabbed with a brush dark, and then there were the, the, these branches before the flock was airbrushed or painted darker, right? And it's very, very minimalistic. Um, when you look at it closely and it's just such a beautiful tree i'm sorry but it just really is and it deserves praise now let me show you um, an example two examples of flocking before like flocking meaning putting on the initial secondary branches etc like here's a, a cedar tree that i'm working on okay now i've done the wire limbs here pretty much for this, like the idea is a cedar tree. These all get reshaped at the end, these limbs. So they're displayed out like that so that I could flock them last night. But I put some uh, sizal rope for larger branches, like initial branches, and then I reflocked by hand. Yeah, like a model, like each limb, I just stabbed on some like matte medium, like straight 100% matte medium, just stabbed on the sizal rope after the wire. And then what happens is, is when the sizal rope strands, there's just a few on there, it gives tooth to put the additional 12 mil on. And you can see, so I just redid this again on the third pass and then stabbed in 12 mil. And now what I'm going to do is, is uh, just massage the branches off, like just stroke them. So all the loose material falls off. But see how, see that branch there? 
that branch structure. This will get painted like dark brown, okay? And then once it's all dry, then I'm going to come in with matte medium, touching it with a brush. I'm just going to put on the green flock and try to be minimalistic about it. If you over flock it, it just becomes one big clump and you lose the effect of the light shining through. So once again, I'll just show you that, that, that tree and why I think it's absolutely fantastic. Because whoever did this tree, the tree artist, allowed light to come through. See that? That's why this tree is so effective. And it's not that complicated. I mean, you could twist up a dozen of these over a day or two, take your time, and make up a whole grove of these. And very little materials is needed. You can cover this with 50-50 matte medium glue and just sprinkle on super fine sand. Oxide sand is what I like to use. Or sawdust. Or if you want to do it, this is a little more labor intensive, but you, but you can control the sculpt more with this. Like, you know, when you want to do burrows and, uh, you know, like I stuck on some pieces of wooden dowel that cut off. Like this is going to be kind of near a building. So maybe these limbs were trimmed off, cut, you know, and they're just stumps, dead stumps on the tree. So this is a model that I'm spending time with. I, I work on it a bit. And I put it away and I bring it back. I look at it one day. I go, I'm going to do one side of this. I'm going to flock some of this. And then you end up with this really, really cool model tree that you're proud of and really makes your layout pop or the scene that you uh, decide to plant it in. Okay. So uh, that's the next stage. It's like this initial branch flocking, I call it, is all done. I just need to massage each branch and then I recover all this 12 mil to be reused again, okay? Now, here's one that's a little more simpler that I wanna show you in closing here. So here's the loop system. Remember the loop system? So er, like earlier back on my initial uh, tree, vid, uh, tree tutorials under videos, uh, one of the popular ones was done this way where you, know, where you do the loop like this. Um, and the reason why I leave the loop is because it's like a saddle. Like when you put the flocking on, you put a bit of glue here and then you just put a mat like you take a whole mat like this and just press it on like that and leave it on a clump like that like thatching I call it 80% of that's going to fall off right and then I'm going to come along and I'm going to cut this in half like that and then just straighten these out and spread them out now I got two flocked limbs see so now when I do when I do a little bit of matte medium and I you know the pinch and stab the pinch and stab technique that I use for building out ground tuft and grass I do the same kind of thing on here and I build out the secondary branch structure and then I come along and I massage that that layer away and it's ready like the branch structure on the tree is ready to be painted and then flocked with you know, the leaves, like whatever leaves that you choose to use, right? And then you can change the characteristic of the tree by, you know, um, you know, some trees, the limbs swing up like this. Some hang down when they grow long and heavy, the weight. Some don't get any flocking, they die up above. So this is going to be a tree growing out of a tree that's sort of half dead. And then another candelabras coming out near the bottom. I'm going to flare this out a bit more build this up. There's different ways of doing this as well I've shown. You can build it up with um, acrylic paste or you can take a dowel like this just to refresh. Uh, I like to cut away a little bit. This is a light, uh, light softwood dowel so it's easy to carve and plane. And then I just knifed a little bit of a rabbit bevel, just uh, cut in a little bit and then just carved away with a knife just so that these pieces of wire merge into the trunk the taper here a bit better and and this is c8 and then i'm going to cover this with um, fiber paste right so we want a big old textured maple trunk 